I first started fishing Monk's Pit um, back in 2008. So yeah, I was on a bit of a downer for the fishing until I got back on Monk's Pit, so I'm, I am really enjoying it. So, despite what I've said in the past, here I am, mid-session, also mid-season, back on Monk's Pit. So why have I returned to a place where I said I'd never come back? Um, it's not just Monk's Pit, I've always said I wouldn't return to a venue anywhere where I've done well, for, well in the past um, because of repeat captures and things like that. I like to move around, go different lakes. But the last couple of years, what with the pandemic and things, lockdowns, closures, um, not getting enough bank time due to work and things as well, not just the pandemic, the year before last, I didn't really get a lot of bank time. Uh, I fished a quarry and done 12 nights. Uh, I fished Manor last year, done about 10 or 11 nights. I just needed somewhere where I could get my teeth into. I thought, Monk's Pit, I've kept an eye on the stock. I've, I know people on here still who was on here before. I know the owner, so I've kept like in touch with the lake. So I know what's going on. I know what fish, what was in here. Uh, pretty much have now gone, most of the old A team, so-called A team. Um, and a lot of big fish have come through. So it's virtually a totally different lake. It's, um, yeah, it's very different for a lot of reasons I can explain in a while. But um, yeah, it's just a no-brainer for me. It's a half hour down the road to me, so it's nice and local. Um, yeah, so here I am, I'm back. So what's changed at Monk's Pit since I've been away? Um, well, the A14 next to the lake is a lot quieter for a start because there's been a new road built, so you haven't got the constant drum of lorries going past all the time. The car park has been redone, which is nice. Uh, all the gates have been redone, so they're all nice. So it's more a comfortable place to be, comfortable place to fish. The weed has been treated, which is probably the main change. So instead of that thick Canadian and the weed beds everywhere, along with the kelp and Canadian, all the Canadian is pretty much gone. So now there's just the kelp weed, which is what Monks is pretty famous for. That's still there, but in general, it's a lot more comfortable fishing. Um, that's probably the main change, yeah, the weed. But, oh, and obviously the fish, the stock and the size of the fish is probably better than it was before. The average stamp, the average size of fish has gone through the roof. So yeah, changes are all good. So have I found myself fishing the same spots and swims as when I first fished Monk's Pit? Um, I'd say no, definitely not. What I've tried to do when I've come back this time is to, I want it to feel very different. So whereas before I used to fish the same, probably two or three swims, I had my favourite three swims. Um, and if I couldn't get in one, I'd get in the other. And if I couldn't get in that one, I'd get in my third choice. And I pretty much rotate them around. I'm now, trying to move more, try and go in different swims. Yeah, I am concentrating mainly on one bank. There's one bank I'm fishing now. There's, oh, I don't know, about seven swims along here. And I've pretty much fished every one of them like this season so far. But yeah, I've got used to about three swims again and getting into that habit, but they're three totally different swims to what I used to fish. I'd say my three favorite swims from what I used to fish, I've done a total of about two nights in total with all three of them put together so which is exciting for me because i can still jump in them later in the season and be confident in them but yeah i want it to feel really different so spots wise i'm definitely not fishing the same spots um i always did try to sort of fish my own areas and fish very different so with the way the weed's been treated um and the way the weed growth is after all these years it's never going to grow back the same as it was so it would be totally new anyway. So the only thing which I find similar is uh, the habits of the fish, like 
patrol routes and where they'll be in certain depths, certain times of the year, in certain weather conditions. But I'm generally trying to find my own spots, not go by the spots other people are sort of commonly fishing. Um, I do notice a lot of anglers in here, on here, which is not a bad thing, are fishing very much spot orientated sort of anglers where they're um, a certain swim has got their real hot spots, like 18 wraps to the church in this swim, 24 wraps to a certain tree in that swim. And, and yeah, they do produce big fish and good fish and good hits sometimes, but I'm trying to avoid them areas because I want to do things my own way. Um, if I can get a spot going, which I have found, then it's my own personal one, no one else can muck it up. If I catch from my own spot, then no one can accuse me of catching from their spot or somewhere they've baited. I find it easier to just try and do your own thing, catch your own, like from your own spots. So yeah, I'm trying to make it as different as possible. And it does feel very different. With the way the weed is now, it's very different to before. Tactics wise, this spell, I'd say that's changed a lot too. Because where there's a lack of weed now, I know it's early on in the season, um, Whereas before you could cast at showing fish, but you probably end up um, sticking your lead and your bait in a ball of weed, because that's generally where they'd show over the weed. I noticed early on in the season, you'd have a fish nut out, chuck a lead to it, and you get a donk down. I thought, wow, that was unheard of before at Monk's Pit, because there's a lot of clearer areas now. So yeah, tactics early on in the season, a really good one for me, which got me a lot of bonus fish, was casting at showing fish and you generally get that drop or even a bit of a half drop and that was good enough and with a long rig like maybe a stiff hinge rig and things I was picking up a lot of bonus fish doing that so that was one good tactic. Um, I used to fish a lot of hemp and particle over here so that's changed as well because you can't use particle over here now so the crayfish pellets and the um, liquids from DNA have come into me fishing they've, all, they've been in me fishing a long time anyway but They've come into me monks bit fishing much more than they used to because you can only use really boily pellet, uh, sweet corn, liquids, things like that now. So to use the hydrospod syrups, the liquid food, to draw the fish down from the top when people are fishing zigs and things, I'm still stuck to the bottom. I've not really fished zigs this season. I've been using liquids to try and bring them down. A lot of the crayfish pellets. So that's another tactical change. Um, what else has changed really? I've still got my same superstitions. I still park in my same spot in the car park, which is under a big tree. Birds crap all over my van every time I come here, but until I blank, I've got to keep parking in that same spot and have my van covered in crap. So that's stayed the same. Um, also, with my first, oh, I thought I was going to have a take then. My first fishing dinner this year was um, the old El Paso for heaters. And I do like taking them fishing. I thought I'd have them for my first dinner. And if I, if I blanked, I wouldn't take them again. I'd try something else. I know this sounds mad. But because I caught on my first session, I thought I'd bring them again the following week. Um, yeah, and I keep on bringing them. I've not blanked yet on Monk's Pit since I've been back. So I've had fajitas virtually every Sunday. So Baby Tell, who's, fishing, who's actually here filming, has got fajitas with me tonight because I've not blanked. All right, Tell? Yep. Good. So regarding this new stock I'm talking about, Monk's Pit, uh, there's not a lot left of what you'd call the old A-team, even though there was a lot of big fish before. I think the only remaining ones are Black Spot, which as I say is now mid-50, and moon scale, which was a 40, is now coming out sort of mid 30s. There was quite old fish, some of them ones, like moon scale is now, and it's, you know, it's probably on the way out. So the big ones what are coming through, there's now three, what I'd call new 40 pound commons. Battery going in my alarm. There's now three new 40 pound commons. There's, as I say, there was five fifties. One of them has sadly passed this year, but there's still four fifties to go at. Um, I think there's over 30 forties. There's God knows how many thirties. Um, it always was a good thirties water. And that ratio I spoke about before of having um, 
a lot of 30s, like every time you get a take, there's more chance of being a 30 than a 20. That's stood up this year as well. There's probably, every time you get a take, it's more chance of it being a 30 than a 20. I think I've had more 30s and 20s. So, yeah, the stock is still phenomenal. And there's a few tench, there's no bream. The catfish is still in here, I've caught an eel. But, yeah, the stock is unreal. Uh, the big fish that everyone wanted at the time, uh, it's, it's died now, but a fish called Porky was probably one of the most famous Monk's Pit residents, which was the first Monk's Pit 50. I never caught that one. And yeah, why did I not catch it? I think I might have caught it if I'd have used a bait boat more and probably being stubborn not using a bait boat meant I didn't catch it. It'd often come out to a bait boat, load of food, often in a swim, a double, which is, um, again, it's one of them swims where there was a spot, I think it was about 25 odd wraps out. A uh, little hole in the weed, one of them which I'd always shy away from because I didn't have the boat, so I was not very confident about hitting the exact spot. So, yeah, I think if I'd have not been too stubborn and used a bait boat, I might have caught that. Uh, do I regret it? I remember I was asked on a DNA mindset if I regret that, and I said yes. But because of something that's happened this year, um, which I'll talk about soon, uh, I've changed my mind actually, so no, I don't regret it at all anymore. Um, no, I've got over it. Thanks to Monk Spit being such a prolific water, that started my association with DNA back in 2012, 2013. I was sending a lot of pictures off to Carp Talk at the time, um, probably for personal glory reasons and because I had two small kids, they liked seeing Daddy in a magazine. Um, yeah, anything about 30, sometimes 35 plus, because uh, you just weren't getting in Carp Talk otherwise, if you didn't have like, anything about 35, there were so many captures going in. Um, yeah, I was sending pictures in and I noticed I was on mainline baits at the time, because I've never really been associated with any bait company before DNA. Uh, and I noticed they had a little league table in the Fox mainline carp angler of the year competition. And I noticed in the little league table, I kept picking up points every time I send a 30 in, and I was creeping up this little table, and I didn't really even know what it was about. But when I noticed that I was in the top four, top three, and I noticed the prize was like a thousand pounds worth of Fox gear, 500 pound of mainline bait at the end of the year, I thought, Mm, this could be worth like chasing. I hadn't really won anything major before. So, yeah, as the year went on and I started getting towards the end of the season, I started thinking I've got half a chance here. Um, I think Carl Pitcher, who was, uh, he's on here now actually, he, he was in third place fishing Grenville. Um, he was in third at the time, I was in second, and the guy Sean Young was in first on Welly. Uh, I was never catching him, he was catching 40s virtually every week. So I was chasing second got to the stage when Carl uh, was on Grenville and Grenville flooded so he couldn't fish for some of the time. Yeah, unlucky Carl. So um, yeah, I've managed to have a few in the winter and I secured second place. I won me Fox and my mainline gear. And one thing I totally ignored was the fact that the East region of Carp Talk was sponsored by DNA Bates. Um, and what really put the cherry on the cake that season for me was I got a call from uh, from Bev at Carp Talk, but also from Jace at DNA, saying congratulations, you've won Carp Angler of the Year for the East region, which was lovely. I got a little trophy, I've never had a fishing trophy before, but Jace said I won a thousand pounds with a DNA bait, which I thought, wow, that's fantastic. I buy a bigger freezer for a start. I got a bigger freezer, stocked it up with DNA bait, I thought I'd better sell it because I've never used DNA, it's probably rubbish. Um, I tried it, I tried it on Monk's Pit and honestly it went off to a flyer from the start. I was getting bigger hits than I'd ever had before. Uh, the Christmas tree swim I was fishing a lot, I was getting 10, 12 fish sometimes where I was, used to have like one or two here and there. Uh, yes, yeah, so it got my association with DNA baits. Um, I'd never been sponsored or anything. I did always think, I'd had, a, I'd had quite a few big fish. I did feel like, yeah, I was sort of, did want a deal to be honest. I did want a little bit cheaper bait and I asked Jace if, it, if I could have and he said yeah I would have contacted you I just wanted to see what your reaction was first if anyone else contacted you. He said like the ethics of DNA and the morals we don't want you to just jump on go with any bait company who offers you something and then keep 
coming in, leaving, and have people like that. They've got good morals at TNA. So, uh, yeah, I sort of stood the test there, I think, because I did turn down a couple of little offers, and um, yeah, I got in with DNA, and that was the end of that story. I've stayed with DNA ever since, and um, I'm glad I did. Yeah, that started my association with DNA. Keep a tally of the 40s, well, like I caught back there. Now, yes, I did. I've always been a little bit anal when it comes to like logging my fish, what I've caught. I've got one of them little catch log report books. Uh, I used to put down everything what I caught over 20 pound. Uh, then, without boasting, I started crossing them off and putting everything over 30 pound. And I've even got a little book now, which I've only got 40s plus in there. So yeah, I did keep a meticulous record of what I caught over 40 pound, and I still do. Um, so yeah, the ones I caught over 40 back then, obviously, as I said, slope back was my first one. Um, big common. Then I think I had uh, one called quarter linear towel. Uh, gill cluster, black spot, uh, moon scowl, and Hartford fish. Yeah, how's that for a memory? So yeah, that was the 40s I had. Um, yeah, I still keep a record of them. Um, yeah, when did I think it was time to move on? Probably when I started getting too many repeats. Uh, black spot, I caught three times over me five years. That was probably the main big one I caught on a regular basis. Not really regular but enough for me to think I don't really want it again. Uh, Hartford fish I had twice, quarter linear tail I had twice. Um, slope back and big common both passed away on my first stint while I was here so they went and gill cluster I didn't have again but those big ones that I caught again along with some of the big 30s I caught again uh, there was one 30 called kinky I think it was called it was about 32 pound had a real distinct shape to it, like a humpback. Um, I lost count of how many times I caught that. It must have been about 15. And when you see something like that in your net, you don't take a picture anymore. You think you're not even happy of catching it. You think like, no, that's ridiculous now. Some other people want that fish. And you know, it's, that's when you know it's time to move on. You keep getting them repeats. Uh, yeah, Porky was still there. I still wanted Porky. There's a fully scaled mirror, 35 pound. I still wanted that. Uh, there was a few I still would have liked. There was one called a sheriff, like a big 40 pound fish. Um, yeah, Mr. Grey went on a missing list towards the end of my spell, but that might have been in here. I would have liked that. But there was too many repeats for me to stay, so that's when I knew it was time to move on. It's been a good return for me so far at Monk's Pit. Uh, so far I've had, I've had a fish this morning which brought me tally up to 40 fish. Uh, luckily I've only lost one, I had one hook pull in the dreaded kelp. But yeah, I can't complain about that because there's quite a few fish get lost here. So I'm pretty pleased about that. Most of the fish have been 30 plus. I've had one of the 40s, a fish called Arnie, which is a 40 pound common. Um, that was an absolute cracker, there's probably one of the 40s, the main 40 I was not totally after, I've not so much targeting fish, but that's probably the 40 I would have wanted most. I'm really happy with that one. Um, yeah, and the icing on the cake was a fish called Dolly, which was 52 pound. So um, yeah, that was probably highlight of my season so far. I was fishing a swim, which I never used to fish before. I think I'd done one night in my previous five years in the double swim. Um, I was having a good session, it was all right. I'd, I'd had, a, I think I had a mid-20 common. I'd had a beautiful fully scaled, or heavily scaled 32, one of the nicest fish I've ever had, like really pretty, fur, like heavily scaled one, which I think went in as like a double years ago when I was back on here. So everything was going well. Uh, I was fishing over little beds of bug. Um, and. I've cast in singles as well, PB pop-ups, showing fish, stuff like that. I'd, I think I'd had one on the PB pop-up. I had the 32 over the bug. And then it went a bit dead on my last night. And the next day, I decided to just, I changed from my bug hook bait. I put a PB pop-up on and I lobbed it out just off of the baited area. Um, 
started packing away. Yeah, nothing happened the rest of that day or most of the last day. Um, yeah, my session sort of went downhill. I got a couple of phone calls from home. The missus rung to say, uh, I think 90 odd pound had been taken out of our account. We'd been scammed by some parcel delivery company. She sent off a little parcel and they ripped us off for the price of the parcel. So that wound me up. Uh, she said, oh, by the way, Lucy's also dyed her hair. Miss my daughter has dyed her hair red and black and the school has still had a couple of weeks to go. So um, she wasn't going to get away with that at school. So that was a bit of stress. Then I had a phone call saying like, my work's been canceled in the middle of the pandemic. I really needed the money. All of a sudden the session was turning really sour and I had a raving ump. So the only thing about this session work being canceled is I was able to stay on a little bit longer at Monk's Pit. I stayed about an extra three hours to what I would have had to with a job being cancelled because normally I go straight off to work. So, usual thing, I packed all my stuff away, I always leave the rods out till last, put the pod away, the bite alarms away, um, you take away the rods that you think are least likely to go. I left the most likely rod, the one I had the 32 on, like the recast PB pop-up, the right hand rod, on the deck and just a net. And I went back to my barrow, I started pouring the rain, I thought that's great, that's the last thing I needed. Um, got back to the rod, it, nothing was happening. I picked it up, I started winding in, and I felt a bit of resistance. And I thought, that must be a pike. So I just nabbed me like yellow pop up as it's coming in. So I like, started like, playing it, then I realised it was pulling, it was pulling. I thought, that's much too big to be a pike. So I thought, it could be a catfish, could be a foul hooked carp. And it just suddenly dawned on me that my line what was going to the right was sort of in the centre. So I thought, this could have been a proper take, and it's just kited left basically to the middle of the swim and I've just not heard it. So I started playing it a bit more cautiously and it put up an absolute amazing fight. Um, yeah, cut a long story short, I knew it was a carp by now and I just was hoping it wasn't foul hooked. I got it into the edge, um, it put up an epic fight. I, can, I could see like a little yellow PB pop up, sticking out of its mouth. It went in the net and it was an absolute unit. And I thought, oh wow, that's just brought me um, mood back up again, I can smile again. So. Yeah, got it in the net. I went and got Derek Ritchie, who was fishing up the bank to me, the Don. And uh, yeah, proper character, Del is, if anyone knows him, obviously. He come down, he had a look in the net. And uh, yeah, he said, what's he say? He went, oh, wow, Perry, 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 Perry chicken. I can't do a Del impression. I won't do a Del impression. But he said, Perry, Perry chicken, you've got a wanger on the banger, which is a banger on the wanger, is it? But he just meant he's got, I've got a massive fish in the net. Um, we got it up on the scales, yeah, it went exactly 52 pound. And Dell's caught a lot of 40s in this place. He knows a lot of the fish, but he didn't know what one that was. I knew it wasn't Black Spot. I knew it wasn't Mojo. Uh, so it could have been either Peach or your missus. So I took a photo of it, sent it to Darren, the bailiff, and to Mick, the owner. And Darren come back to me and he said, it's a fish called Dolly that's not been out for about two years. Uh, it's also a new 50, because the last time it come out was 48 pound. So I was really buzzing with that to get a new 50 and a rarely caught one, like that made it extra special. And then Mick rang me and said, yeah, was, he confirmed it was Dolly. And he said it was named after his mum, his late mum, whose name was Dolly, which was a nice extra touch. So um, yeah, that was absolute highlight of my season. Would I say I'm as motivated as I used to be? Uh, yeah, definitely. I turned 50 this year, so I thought that motivation might go a bit, and it probably did the last couple of years. But now I'm back on Monk's Pit, thinking about it, yeah, the motivation's definitely still there. I often come down on a Sunday, so I find myself more often than not on a Saturday, once I've run around doing the things I want to do on a Saturday, getting my gear ready, like seven, eight o'clock at night, I might finish that about 10, then I'll think to myself, I want to get some rigs ready, so I'll end up doing 10 or 20 rigs or so. But I used to fish matches and things. I've got a bit obsessed with getting mega prepared with rigs and stick mixes and things like that. So I'll maybe make up a load of those as well. And a lot of the time I'll get into them and I'll suddenly look at me watch and it's like one, two in the morning. And then I'll be setting my alarm for half past three because I want to get up and get here for first light to see like the monk's pit fish often show first light so you want to try and be here and see where they are and get an idea of where you want to be on the lake so yeah that side of things the motivation is definitely there 
Um, I'll still rebate after the take, whether that be like two in the morning, pour in the rain, whatever, even if I have to go out in a boat to get the fish. Um, yeah, so that's not gone. Am I still enjoying it as much? Definitely, yeah, I'm loving it. Um, my plans for fishing, if I hadn't got back on Monks, I don't know where I'd have gone, where, if I'd have renewed my manor ticket, or whether I'd have just tried and find somewhere to fish. I might have even almost given up for a year, which I've not done. I've not really had a week, a year out of fishing for 30 odd years, but I might have done. Um, yeah, because I did plan on going France more, but obviously that's all been gone up the spout with the uh, travel restrictions and things. So yeah, I was on a bit of a downer for the fishing until I got back on Monk's Pit, so I'm, I am really enjoying it. Would I do another five years on Monk's Pit like I did before? Probably not. I do like moving about as much as I love it and I'm really like, enjoying my fishing. Um, I'm probably going to want to change although there's a lot of 40s to go for. As I say, I've had that 50, I've had one 40. There's loads of ones to go for what I've not had. I'm not getting the repeat captures that I feared I would. I think I've only had one fish that I recognise from my past spell, and it's one called the Smallmouth Common. All the others I'm pretty sure I've not had before, so that's been really pleasing. So I've got so much to go for, I'm not going to get that done in the next year or two, so unless I absolutely smash it in the next couple of years, I can't see me leaving in the next two or three years so yeah I might do another five years but whatever I do I'm really glad I come back um, everyone needs a happy place I think the way things are at the moment and yeah Monk's Pit is definitely my happy place. I think for anyone thinking about going back to a venue which like I've said in the past that I wouldn't recommend it. Um, and then I've obviously gone back on my word. I do think in this situation, I've come to realize if there's enough changes, like the way the fish stock is, um, the actual lake itself has changed and the surroundings, the people, there's been so many changes, it feels totally different to me. I think in that situation, if there's been enough changes, and enough time gone by, and especially for me, if there's enough changes in the stock, then yeah, it can work going back. But if there's not been them changes and you've still got them same fish there, then all I'd advise is to think very carefully about going back because I still don't think it's gonna work. I still wouldn't advise it. And I still wouldn't go back to a venue that there's still the same fish in, which I'm just gonna catch again and again, if I've had most of them. Um, Cause I think you're just gonna go back and think, start realizing and remembering why it is you're left in the first place. So if you're going to go back, yeah, I, I don't see why not if there's been the changes, but give it some thought, think very carefully, because um, you could regret it, I think. So we've just got our heads down on our final night of our little filming session on Monk's Pit. And the middle rod rattled off. And this is a result after a little kelp battle in the boat. Um, popped up quite okay, no dramas on this one. And uh, yeah, frustratingly in a way, 39.15. But I'm not complaining at all. That's why I'm back at Monk's for chunks like this. So yeah, really happy to end it on that if that's gonna be the last fish, 39.15. So, proper buzzing with that one. On a DNA hard hooker, over a few chops, crumb, mini crayfish pellets, and some S7 Hydrospod syrup in there as well. <laughs>